Kwaksu, a hidden utopia, a land of peace and harmony, where people live in bliss and innocence. In the far northwest of China, beyond the mountains and deserts, lies this mythical country, unreachable by the mortal world. Here, there are no kings or laws, no wars or conflicts, no greed or envy. People follow their natural instincts, enjoy the fruits of the earth, and respect all living things. They are happy and content, unaware of the troubles and temptations of the outside world. Kwaksu is a realm of pure joy, a dream of heaven on earth. Kwaksu is a land of joy and peace, where people live in harmony with nature and each other. They do not have any rulers or laws, nor any desires or worries. They enjoy the simple pleasures of life, such as picking fruits, singing songs, dancing, and playing games. They are kind and gentle, and respect all living things. They do not know the meaning of war, violence, or injustice. They are happy and content, living in a state of innocence and grace. Kwaksu is a paradise on earth, a dream of heaven. Kwaksu is a land of wonders, where people possess divine gifts and abilities. They can walk on water as if it were solid ground, and remain unscathed by fire as if it were harmless. They can communicate with animals and plants, and heal any wounds or illnesses. They can fly in the sky and travel to other realms. They are like gods among men, living in harmony with the natural order. Kwaksu is a land of miracles, where anything is possible. From the land of Kwaksu, a young maiden of extraordinary beauty sets out on a journey to the east. She is curious and adventurous, longing to see the wonders of the world. She has heard of a mystical swamp called Lees, where the sky and the earth meet, and where the gods dwell. She wants to witness the divine spectacle, and perhaps even encounter a god. She is fearless and determined, ready to face any challenges or dangers. She leaves her home and her people, following her heart and her dreams. The young maiden reaches the Lee's Swamp, a mystical place where the sky and the earth meet, and where the gods dwell. She is fascinated by the sight of the foggy and mysterious swamp, and decides to explore it further. As she walks along the swamp, she stumbles upon a gigantic footprint, a colossal and mysterious remnant that piques her curiosity. She wonders who or what could have left such a mark, and whether it is still nearby. She feels a mix of awe and intrigue, and decides to follow the trail of the footprint. In a moment of playfulness, she steps into the giant footprint, unaware of the fateful path this act would set her upon. She feels a surge of energy, a connection with something beyond her comprehension. She does not know that the footprint belongs to the Thunder God, the ruler of the heavens, and that by stepping into it, she has invoked his attention. She does not know that this simple gesture will change her life and the destiny of the world forever. From this miraculous encounter, she gives birth to a boy, Fuxi, a child of destiny, born of the heavens. He has inherited his mother's human face and his father's dragon body, and he is endowed with great wisdom and power. He is the first of the three sovereigns, the ancient rulers of China, who would bring civilization and harmony to the world. She holds him in her arms, gazing at his radiant face, while the stars and planets shine brightly behind them. She feels a deep connection with the cosmos, and knows that her son is destined for greatness. Fuxi, resembling the thunder god with a human face, and serpentine body, ascends to the heavens, a bridge between earth and sky. He learns the secrets of the universe, the laws of nature, and the mysteries of life. He sees the patterns and cycles of creation, the order and chaos of existence. He understands the harmony and balance of all things, the yin and yang of the world. He returns to the earth, ready to share his knowledge and wisdom with his people. Fuxi's wisdom blooms as he crafts the eight diagrams, capturing the essence of heaven, earth, and all creation. 
He draws eight symbols, each consisting of three lines, either broken or unbroken. He assigns each symbol a meaning, representing an element, a direction, a season, a virtue, and more. He arranges the symbols in a circular order, forming a complete system of cosmology and philosophy. He teaches his people how to use the eight diagrams to understand the forces and influences of the world and to guide their actions and decisions. Fuxi introduces the art of weaving fishing nets, bestowing upon the people a means to harness the bounty of the rivers. He shows them how to use the eight diagrams as a template to create a mesh of interlocking knots. He teaches them how to cast the nets into the water and how to pull them back with the catch. He instructs them how to preserve and cook the fish and how to share them with others. He gives them a new source of food and income, improving their lives and livelihoods. With nets in hand, the villagers reap the riches of the water, their faces alight with triumph and gratitude. They catch fish of various shapes and sizes, enough to feed themselves and their families. They enjoy the taste and nutrition of the fish, and the variety and abundance of their meals. They trade the surplus fish with other villages, exchanging them for other goods and services. They thank Fuxi for his generosity and guidance, and praise him as their benefactor and leader. Inspired by Fuxi, his followers craft bird nets, extending their mastery over the skies and its winged wonders. They use the same principle of the eight diagrams, but modify the size and shape of the nets to suit the different types of birds. They learn how to lure and trap the birds, and how to handle and tame them. They use the birds for food, feathers, eggs, and companionship. They marvel at the beauty and diversity of the birds, and the joy and wonder they bring. Fuxi's heart grows heavy as he witnesses the struggles of his people, burdened by the ailments of consuming raw sustenance. He sees them suffer from stomach pains, infections, parasites, and diseases. He feels their pain and sorrow, and wishes to relieve them of their misery. He decides to find a way to improve their health and well-being, and to enhance their quality of life. He sets out on a quest, to seek a solution, to find a cure. In the midst of a raging storm upon Tianshan Mountain, Fuxi stands resolute as lightning tears through the sky. He has climbed the highest peak to face the wrath of the heavens and to challenge the power of his father, the Thunder God. He has a plan, a daring and dangerous one, to steal the fire from the sky and to bring it to the earth. He waits for the right moment, the perfect opportunity to execute his bold and risky move. Lightning ignites the dry forest, unleashing a devastating blaze, its flames claiming the lives of many a creature. The fire spreads rapidly, consuming the trees and plants, and scorching the earth. The animals flee in panic, trying to escape the inferno, but many are trapped and burned alive. The smoke and ash fill the air, creating a dark and suffocating atmosphere. The fire rages on a destructive and merciless force, leaving behind a trail of death and destruction. In the aftermath, Fuxi discovers the charred remains, a discovery that kindles a spark of revelation. He sees the roasted animals, their flesh cooked and tender, and their bones cracked and exposed. He feels a pang of hunger and a surge of curiosity. He decides to taste the meat and finds it delicious and satisfying. He realizes that the fire has transformed the food, making it more palatable and nutritious. He has found the solution, the cure, he was looking for. Fuxi brings the gift of fire to his people, a beacon of progress and civilization. He shows them how to light and control the fire, and how to use it for various purposes. He teaches them how to cook their food, and how to enjoy its flavor and benefits. He instructs them how to use the fire for warmth, light, and protection. He gives them a new tool, a new power, a new way of life. Around the newfound flame, the people gather, 
cooking their meals, their faces illuminated by the fire's warm glow. They roast their fish and birds, and savor their taste and texture. They feel their health and vitality improve, and their ailments and pains disappear. They rejoice in the fire's comfort and brightness, and its ability to ward off the cold and darkness. They celebrate the fire's presence and significance, and its role in their survival and happiness. Fire transforms Huaxu. People grow robust and spirited. They develop skills, arts, cultures, societies. They explore lands, regions, rivers. They experience joys, challenges, adventures. Fuxi, fulfilled, watches his people, smiles, ascends. He sees them happy, prosperous, peaceful. He bids farewell, thanks, tells them to remember. He becomes a star, a symbol. Thanks for checking out this video. If you had fun watching it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button. You're awesome.